boys and girls, and welcome to week 12 of your virtual music lesson. Last week, I introduced you to the instrument families, and we talked about how in the orchestra, we can put all of the instruments into four families, the string family, the woodwind family, the brass family, and the percussion family. Today, we're gonna focus on learning about the string family. Can you say, string family? String family. Nice job. As you can imagine, the instruments in the string family have strings. So there are two ways these instruments can be played. You can pluck the string. Another word for that is pizzicato. Can you say pizzicato? Very good. So you can pluck the strings or you can make them sound by using a bow. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later. Now, all of these instruments in the string family look very similar. The only difference is their size. Today, I want to introduce you to five string instruments. The first instrument we're going to learn about is the violin. Can you say the violin? Here's a picture of the violin. Cool, right? The violin is the smallest of these five instruments. The violin is made out of wood and it has four strings. Now, the violin can also be played with a bow that we just talked about. Now, a bow is made of wood and it actually has horse hair. And that's what you bow across the strings in order to create the sound. When you play a violin, you hold it up and you put the body of the violin here and it rests on your shoulder. Then there's this little black piece on the violin that you turn your head and you place your chin on. This is called a chin rest. Now, when you play the violin, you use your fingers to change the notes and your other hand uses the bow to be able to produce the sound. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know the violin is composed of over 70 different parts? Pretty cool, right? Next, I wanna tell you a little bit about the viola. Say, viola. The viola is very similar to a violin, but it's really considered the violin's big brother. And the reason for that is because it's a little bigger. It also plays some deeper notes than the violin does. The viola is 29 inches long, which makes it only five inches longer than the violin. Now, the viola has been around since the 1500s, and it definitely belongs in the string family. Here's a fun fact for you about the viola. In the 1700s, the viola used to be called viola de brazo. Here's a picture of the viola. Now I wanna teach you a little bit about the cello. Can you say cello? Good, here's a picture of it. The cello is one of Miss Livingston's favorite instruments to listen to. It has a rich sound and it's so beautiful. Now the cello is played very differently than the violin and viola, mainly because of its size. So where a violin might be this tall and a viola might be this tall, a cello is really big. From the ground up, it's probably about to here. So you have to sit down to play it. And what you do is you sit down and you put the cello right between your knees, okay? And your knees help support it. Now the cello has an end pin. So what you do is you take the end pin out and you tighten it. And that end pin is what the cello rests on. It's very cool. Now, just like the violin and the viola, you use a bow to sound the cello. It's very cool. Here's another fun fact. The cello did not always have the end pin or the spike. Some people call it a spike. Before the end pin was invented, people had to hold the cello in between their legs and just support it all by themselves. Isn't that crazy? The cello is known as one of the most expressive instruments and it's also called the violin cello. 
And now we're gonna talk about an even bigger string instrument. It's called the double bass, double bass. Very good, here's a picture. Now, the double bass did not get into the orchestra really until the 1700s. And this instrument is huge. You have to stand to play it, or sometimes you can sit on a stool. It's, it's way taller than Miss Livingston. The double bass often appears in rock and jazz bands, but it's called a stand-up bass there. I'm sure you've seen it. So, it's so tall, you have to hold your arm up like this and then bow it just like this. It's kind of cool and it plays the lowest of all of the instruments that we've talked about so far. The last instrument I wanna to talk to you about today is the harp. Can you say harp? Very good. The harp is so big and it's super heavy. Can you guess how many strings are on the harp? Forty-seven. There are 47 strings, that's a lot. So somebody who plays the harp has to sit down and they lean the harp to them and it rests right here. And they use their fingers to pluck the strings. How do they know what string to play if there are 47 of them? That's a great question. Some of the strings on the harp have different colors and this is so they are easier to find for the harpist. The harp is the oldest instrument in the string family. That makes it pretty cool, right? Just to review, we talked about five string instruments today. The violin, viola, cello, double bass, and the harp. Next week, we will begin learning about the woodwind family. So I hope that you have a wonderful week and we will see you next time.